welcome to everybody who uh, has joined us. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us for our Nutrition Community of Practice webinar. And uh, we also wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. Before we begin Jane's presentation, I would like to tell you a little bit about certain and our Nutrition Community of Practice. So just to let you know what we do as the Nutrition Community of Practice, our sponsoring agency is Dietitians of Canada, which is a professional organization for dietitians in Ontario as well as across the rest of the country. The goals for our community of practice are to link both current and future practitioners who are involved in nutrition care of older adults, and we are interested in promoting evidence-based nutrition care. And we do this by supporting knowledge exchange among experts, researchers, professional organizations, practitioners, policymakers, and caregivers. So today's event is an example of how we do promote that evidence-based nutrition care through knowledge exchange. We also disseminate best practices in nutrition care to frontline caregivers in numerous settings and advocate for innovation and best practices in nutrition care of older adults. And our final goal for the community of practice is to stimulate research on food and nutrition issues for older adults. Our uh, well, we'll forward team is representatives from Dietitians Canada, the University of Guelph, Agri-Food for Healthy Aging, at, and the University of Waterloo Research Institute for Aging, the Ontario Society of Nutrition Management, the Registered Nutrition Association of Ontario Long-Term Care Best Practices Coordinators, and the Personal Support Network of Ontario. We also have outreach to other uh, professionals and caregivers that are involved in nutrition care of older adults. So today what we have with us is Jane Dummer, who is a recognized leader in the Canadian food nutrition industry. Jane is currently the project coordinator for the Local Food to Healthcare Facilities Program in Norfolk County, and it's in that role that Jane is today. However, her background is in uh, a number of areas. She's known as Canada's Farm Fields Consumer Plate Dietitian. She's graduated from the University of Guelph with honors and completed a dietetic internship at Hamilton Health Sciences. Jane has led and managed a variety of projects for over 60 organizations, including manufacturers, distributors, food service groups, national and provincial food and health organizations, corporations, and media outlets. Jane has also been a council member for the College of Dietitians of Ontario, a member of the Scientific Advisory Board for Danone Canada, and the Scientific Grant Review Committee for the Canadian Foundation of Dietetic Research. We're very lucky to have Jane here with us to tell us about the Local Food to Healthcare Facilities Program. So thanks again for joining us today, and I'll now turn things over to Jane. Thank you, Leslie. Um, let me start by thanking Hilary Dunn of the Agri-Food for Healthy Aging for inviting me to present today, as well as to you, Leslie and Terry, for your organization and technical support. But I just, again, like to identify that um, this presentation and the project that I'll be speaking about um, has been funded by the Broader Public Sector Investment Fund, and that is through the Ontario government. So through... Um, uh, application from Norfolk County. The um, fund actually provided um, seven months worth of my time for the project and we will be wrapping up at the end of March. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that the broader public sector investment fund is acknowledged uh, for this presentation. So the outline of today's presentation, I'll give you the scope and objectives of the project. Um, what I, we see is the healthcare sector's changing needs and engagement. What are the opportunities and challenges uh, from this project, but it's for you too in the uh, food service sector and how, how you can integrate local food? And an overall impact of the local health uh, or local food system, and then a summary at the end. And as both uh, Terry and Leslie said, I'll be taking questions at the end. Today's learning objectives. Um, hopefully, by the end of the presentation today, you will have an understanding of the approach and possibilities to procure fresh local food within of the healthcare environment. Uh, you'll be able to identify. Um, 
identify how to overcome perceived and real barriers uh, to promote and implement local food in your long-term care facility, as well as be able to discuss the benefits of uh, local food to the overall uh, local food procurement within the healthcare system to the overall local food system. I'm going to just give you a bit of background about the project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is funded by the Broader Public Sector Investment Fund. Uh, there are three partners in this project, three healthcare facilities, two long-term care facilities, so Norview Lodge as well as Cedarwood Village, um, and then Norfolk uh, County Hospital is the third. And we have a farmer processor, which is VG Meats, and they specialize in uh, beef and pork products. And they are a family-run farm uh, located in just outside of Simcoe in Norfolk County. The project has four phases, uh, and uh, the timeline, as I mentioned, is until the end of March. And ideally, this project is to act for a model for other regions with on in Ontario, so not only with Norfolk County, but taking it um, broader across Ontario. The first phase of the project was to do an assessment of each facility. So as I mentioned, there were three facilities, or there are three facilities within the project, and to assess currently what they are buying and the product of origin. Um, this was a really interesting exercise. Um, it was uh, lengthy, and it, we started off, or I started off with milk, produce, as well as protein. Um, and uh, just trying to identify and get this information was a bit of a challenge. Um, certainly some of the suppliers had it at the tip of their fingers and other suppliers didn't. So that made for an interesting process. Also to some suppliers source different um, uh, origins at different times depending on price and seasonality. So it could change throughout the year. So that was another uh, thing to consider. As part of phase one, we did some marketing around the project. So we did a, a project launch, um, which attracted some, some local media attention. And uh, we also had uh, an opportunity for Norfolk County to develop gateway signs. And so as you can see from my slides, the top bar is um, Ontario's garden, and that's what Norfolk County has trademarked their um, growing area as. And uh, as part of the project, those signs are at the entrance point all over um, the Norfolk County area. So uh, that's just, again, giving uh, more recognition to Ontario's uh, local produce and local um, uh, livestock. And so, again, another way to market the initiative. Phase two is to identify what local products could be implemented into the menu cycle, as well as um, recipe development. And what was really interesting is we had a recipe challenge last week with the three healthcare facilities. And so we had chefs from the hospital and the two long-term care facilities challenge each other. There were three recipes and um, one winner, <laughs> but uh, the recipes included a beef stew, a frittata, and the turkey on the king. And the beef stew was the winner, and what was excellent about that is BG Meats, which was one of the um, key partners in the project, uh, donated all the meat for that for that dish. And so um, that was, a, again, a really good motivator for the, uh, for the participants, as well as uh, an opportunity to get the message out to the uh, to the county as well, and so media was there and it was covered. So um, that was a, a really positive out of phase two. Um, product replacement was local, and I'll get into a bit more detail about that um, throughout the uh, throughout the presentation. Um, a little bit of marketing went along with phase two. And uh, each healthcare facility had the opportunity to have the Ontario Garden booth at their facility. Currently, it's at the hospital, and I'll be at the hospital tomorrow um, manning the booth and explaining about the project, as well as giving away um, some grocery packs and recipe booklets, really focusing again on the local food. 
phase three and part of the funding um, money went towards equipment and so this to help um, with efficiencies and, and productivity and getting more local food into the into the healthcare facilities. So the majority of the money went to VG Meats, which was um, the meat processor, and they purchased an oven, and that oven will allow them to um, do more bulk cooking so that each facility can get the product delivered um, already cooked. So there's uh, more efficiencies in uh, labor as well as uh, the food safety concern is eliminated because, well, not completely eliminated, but it is, the risk is lowered by the product being already cooked. Um, and with the equipment side, again, three of the facilities, the healthcare facilities, were actually able to buy um, smaller equipment to allow for further processing on site of the local foods. For example, a mixer that would allow them to puree local produce um, and a blender, which again would help with the with the pureeing. Um, and another one actually purchased a mixer, which would help um, with mashed potatoes as well as some local desserts. So uh, that was very exciting for them to identify how um, they could get more local food in through the purchase of these equipment. Phase four, the final phase, and that will be the last month um, of the project. I'll be working on the policy and procedure and template writing um, and fi some final marketing pieces plus um, the final report and statistics. Uh, it is very important for the broader public sector and fund to actually quantify how much uh, local food has been implemented into the healthcare facilities. So the and when I mentioned statistics and final report, those will actually reflect numbers and uh, identify the total amount of sales in local food uh, versus when we originally started back in August. So now getting into the um, more of the uh, major or the um, focus of the presentation today's healthcare uh, changing needs. So there is definitely interest in sustainability, the environment, and food of uh, food origin and food service. Um, and I quote a, or I reference a recent uh, publication with the Canadian Journal of Dietetic Practice and Research from 2011. Um, certainly there's interest. Uh, through my experience on this project, interest is not enough. There definitely needs to be engagement. So um, I'll discuss that a little bit later. Um, but looking at patient satisfaction as well as food waste. And in healthcare, um, you know, it's interesting that we want to make sure that the patients are being well fed, um, but are, are the patient satisfactions, are we actually auditing that? Are we auditing the food waste? And uh, this is really um, good information for future research. I really believe that we need a little bit more documentation um, around the entire um, patient satisfaction and food waste within long-term care as well as in, with the hospitals. And to identify whether, um, how local foods, implementing local foods can change that. And in theory, we believe that it is a greater uh, patient satisfaction and lower food waste. Um, but I do really uh, recommend for future research that some studies be done to quantify that. The healthcare uh, and food service engagement. So raising awareness, champions to lead, and policy advocacy. And I'll explain or get, give you a little bit more detail about each of those areas. So raising awareness or building awareness and connections. So um, again, from my experience from this project, um, it was very interesting to see that Norfolk County has numerous growers. Um, however, some of their products weren't uh, staying within Ontario. They were being directly uh, sent to the U.S. And that was, you know, certainly looking at economical uh, situations where they were getting more money for their product in the U.S. and um, it was a, a very financial situation for them. Uh, looking at distribution, so when uh, I, I can give you an example of a distribution um, 
when we were looking at apples grown in Norfolk County, and, and Norfolk County is the number one producer of apples in Ontario. Um, so I went to the, the key grower uh, and I said, where are your apples going? And he identified that his nice apples were going to a packaging company in Mississauga. So I, I, his apples were going and they were slicing them in Mississauga. So I went to their, uh, this package, or this for their processing company and I said, this is great, you know, I think the hospital long-term care facilities would be happy to use your uh, product. Who are you distributing through? Oh, somebody local in Kitchener-Waterloo. And I said, oh, this is terrific. Okay, so we get samples. I, I pick up samples from Mississauga. I deliver them to the facility. We test them out. Everything is looking great. The price point is good. Um, and the distribution uh, center out of KW uh, doesn't deliver to Simcoe. And, and this is very disappointing. Uh, they got as far as Brantford and they didn't get any further. They would get further if there was a minimum order. However, the facilities were too small to um, give each minimum order. So we had to start, <laughs> start from the scratch, um, but certainly that was a real eye-opener. And my point is that here we are trying to get the local products that have been further processed and we can't get it back to the county. So certainly lessons learned like that. Uh, we need to take into consideration. We need to make sure that, um, you know, if, if the product is going through different distribution channels. And, and I don't really consider uh, Norfolk County Simcoe remote. Um, however, it was just was certainly was not on that uh, that delivery uh, cycle and that delivery path. So, um, also to educating the growers around food service packaging and requirements. I'll give you another quick example: is uh, we grow a lot of sweet potatoes in Norfolk County, and a uh, really small grower is doing further processing. Um, so they're making sweet potato muffins, sweet potato cookies, and um, but they're not packaging them that would be required. Their packaging is not what would be, be required in food service. They're taking them to farmers markets and, and more retail outlets like that. So uh, when I went to talk to that grower and I said, okay, well, how would we, how would we package them? Uh, the suggestion was to put them in Tupperware, and the Tupperware would be delivered to the uh, long-term care facility, and then the long-term care facility would uh, clean that out and then um, return the uh, Tupperware. And, and because of the compromised immune systems and because of the regulations, we just said that that wasn't uh, suitable. So again, another uh, education point and lesson learned from this project would be to identify how how these small growers could um, compete and could actually implement food service packaging and requirements. Uh, the other interesting uh, group purchasing organizations, um, certainly there are national organizations that um, when we talk local, it's all of Canada, and so because this project was specifically looking at Ontario, that was um, certainly an awareness and, and education around that. There are some GPOs, um, St. Joseph's Health Systems out of Bradford, who are dedicated to local. They have also received funding from the broader public sector investment fund, and uh, they are really focusing on sourcing local suppliers. And distributors as well. Um, it, it ran a range from dedicated to local to not even being able to track local. So there's a there's a, a, a real range up there. But certainly uh, we're making small steps, and I really encourage each facility to um, work with your TPO and work with your distributor to make sure that um, you are getting um, information about the local local food. The champion to lead, and as I mentioned earlier, interest is definitely there. However, uh, we need engagement and we need a champion to lead the project. So whether it's within your own facility, the chain of facilities, um, that champion needs to be dedicated. There needs to be time <laughs> donated to it, so time management. And also, too, they really need to understand their current food system. 
So they need to identify their areas of efficiency, so labor, equipment, and sustainability. And they need to have a really close connection with their GPO and their distributor, um, because if they're not giving them the information they need, then they need to require that. And um, so that was, again, another uh, identification from the project that um, without the true champion, um, the project to implement more local food um, will not be able to be sustained. And then policy advocacy. Um, so looking at, again, what can be done. So procurement policy to source local when all other attributes are similar. So when you're looking at um, a new supplier, are they local? And um, if they are local, are all the other attributes similar? So meaning um, taste, quality, price, and that was not always the case. Depending on the GPO and the contracts, um, sometimes the, the contracted product was a lot cheaper than the local product. And that goes back to, again, just making sure that when you're talking to your GPO that um, you identify that local is one of your key criteria and that they consider that when they are um, sourcing their suppliers. Um, also, too, you need support facility-wide, um, so, so looking at sustainability not only in food but in waste management, equipment, and non-food procurement. So having an overall um, policy or overall culture um, for sustainability, and that would include the local food. So what are the opportunities to integrate local food? Um, as I mentioned, with our project, we looked at starting with produce, protein, and milk products. Um, in long-term care as well as the hospitals, you have numerous products coming in, um, and so this can be a bit of a bear of, a, of an activity, but um, certainly if you've got, a, a, again, a good distributor who's tracking and who can track for you and who knows their products, and they're knowledgeable about the products, and certainly they are coming along with the whole local food movement, then that can certainly make it easier on you um, to identify each supplier and try to contact them and ask for product of origin is a very lengthy process. I would say that would take up to three months because we did not have the time to do that. Um, we shortcut it a little bit, but certainly, um, you know, that might be something um, to, again, to consider that time to identify that product of origin. Um, again, working with your distributor who is dedicated to sourcing local food and also tracking it. So um, that may be um, you know, something they have to do and put a little bit of time into uh, identifying the Ontario foods and how to track that for you. But it's really important um, because when you are comparing your imported to Ontario, you definitely need that uh, tracking system in place to assist you with that. And what I suggest to do is uh, connect with established growers. Um, so for example, uh, growers who are already dealing with food service, who understand the food safety practices around that, as well as packaging. Um, that is critical. And so, and as I said, we're all kind of in the startup mode with the local food for healthcare facilities. Uh, not so much for restaurants, it's been there for a while. Restaurants are certainly a little bit different population and, and they're regulated differently. So um, starting with the established growers would be my recommendation. I want to give you an example of, out of the project that has, um, has demonstrated the um, ease or, well, I guess, I guess it would depend. It looks like it is ease at this point. But uh, we were able to replace a Norview Lodge's uh, three-week menu cycle. And this was working directly with our partner, VG Meats. And as I mentioned earlier, they specialize in beef and pork. Because they were um, earmarked for the equipment money, they were able to purchase the oven. And so they were offering, and they still are offering, fully cooked uh, protein options and plus deli meats. So what makes it really um, valuable is BT is a small operation. Um, again, good food safety practices in place, family-run business. Um, you know, the, the 
animal is well treated, there's less stress because they're not, um, you know, going far from the field to the um, avatar. So looking at the availability to custom size and cut makes them a great option for the long-term care facilities. They're able to tailor um, their order forms for the health care. Um, they've been dealing a lot in retail, but um, they acted very quickly and were able to tailor um, not only their order forms, but they were accommodating very much with delivery schedules for the long-term care facilities. And what was a, a really positive response is the patients that are through the residents in the long-term care facilities were really uh, excited about the DG meat products on their uh, on their plate. Uh, the patient satisfaction uh, was definitely there, and um, m many of the people in the long-term care facilities are ex farmers and growers and so they are familiar with the product and that again just was a, a qualitative observation that they were very excited and satisfied with that with that change. Another good example coming from Norfolk County is the uh, from farm to table popcorn snacks. Ontario popping corn is a uh, grower farmer within Norfolk County. And because of the heat units in Norfolk County, we're able to grow popping corn. And so um, actually we're probably looking for more growers because this product is so, um, is so successful at this point. So they're providing the raw ingredient and then the processing company is located in Cambridge, again, keeping it local within Ontario. And uh, currently they're 1 million pounds in 2012 and they're predicted to increase to 3 million pounds in 2013 to 2014. And this product is just, um, it's very similar to a size of a chip bag, um, an individual chip bag, and it is um, comes in a variety of flavors, including dill pickle, butter flavor, uh, ch cheddar, and the calorie count is under 100 calories for the bag. And a great success story out of this project is it's now being featured in Norfolk General Hospital's cafeteria. So it displaced a high fat, salty, uh, savory snack product. And now they're featuring a local product and it's very local because the grower is in the hospital's backyard basically. So that's again a very good success story and, and very exciting for uh, the small medium enterprise um, farm to table within Cambridge. Um, looking at a case study, and I won't, it's not a true case study, but I'll just give you a bit of detail. And this is not within Norfolk County, but I wanted to give you this example because um, Cohen Farms in Bradford, which is in the Holland Marsh, is doing an excellent job of working with smaller growers. So they're already established, they're quite a large farmer. He is, I think, fourth generation. And they're already into a major distributor um, with potatoes, onions, carrots, other root vegetables. And they do further processing. So they don't cook, but they chop, dice, and slice, as well as bag, and provide it again to an established distributor. Um, so what Cohen has done is he's working with smaller growers within the area and they're connecting them to um, the food service distributor. And he gives a really good example where a grower, a small grower, was taking cauliflower to the food terminal on a regular basis, not getting consistent pricing, having to drive it in. Um, and then once he connected with Cohen, this farmer found that he was actually getting 35% more money for his cauliflower, driving less, and getting a consistent um, income from that. So it's a really good example that other um, other regions can use and um, certainly there is some risk around the Cohen farms taking on that role um, but it has certainly been very successful for them. So what are the challenges to integrate local foods to healthcare facilities? Uh, from my experience with the project and many other projects that I have uh, 
I've managed over the years of consulting, it's certainly non-engagement. So whether it's from the facilities, whether it's from the distributor, or whether it's from uh, the group purchasing organization. And uh, so that's, you know, certainly going to be a piece of the puzzle of any project. Um, you know, certainly staying positive, staying focused um, is, is, is critical at this point. And celebrating the baby steps. So, you know, to go into your facility and say, okay, we need to change out 40% and have all local foods 40% within the next year is like, you know, saying we need to reduce sodium in the next three months within a product. Uh, so certainly um, celebrating the baby steps is, is important to uh, turn non-engagement into engagement. Distribution logistics, including food safety. I gave you the example of that distribution logistics with Norfolk County apples, and we couldn't get the sliced apples back to the county, which was really frustrating. But not only um, are the distribution logistics within the, the delivery, but including food safety. And what we have found with this project, there's a lot of small um, kind of local uh, distributors popping up here and there, and just to make sure that... Um, First of all, they're viable, and also to that they have food safety practices in place. As I mentioned earlier, we need to have that top of consideration with long-term care and healthcare facilities, um, which is a little bit different from kind of your niche restaurants in Toronto who are really embracing this local food movement. Um, and so making sure, again, that the food safety is in place. Uh, the other uh, key element is time commitment, and all three partners said to me, Jane, we didn't realize the time involved, and I think it's because we're all on kind of at the, the ground level. Um, certainly, as I mentioned, the GPOs and the distributors are at the ground level, too, so when you go and you ask for information, um, it wasn't at their fingertips, so they had to start implementing different systems and tracking systems, and they you know, still are trying to do, do, to accommodate product of origin. So um, time commitment is definitely um, something to consider. And as I mentioned earlier about more research on the patient, patient satisfaction as well as waste, I'd like to see more research need um, to support the cost benefit. So in theory, we'd like to think that, you know, buying local is um, uh, going to benefit our bottom line. But certainly, uh, from the experience from the project, we identified that the, um, the contract pricing may be a lot less um, depending on the GPO, and it necessarily wasn't the local food product. So, what's the overall impact on that local, or what's the overall impact on the local uh, food system? Definitely uh, from this project, there's been awareness and connection as well as collaboration. Um, so, you know, we have identified that products are uh, not able to come back to where they were actually grown, and we are working on on how, how, how can that be and what can we do to have that in place so that we can actually get the product that's grown next door into our healthcare facilities. Um, improved practices on the farm. Uh, certainly when we look at uh, agri-food industries in California or in Florida, they are very sophisticated. They have an incredible, um, you know, uh, money supply because of their, their growing season to actually implement um, sophistication on the farm. So what we're suggesting is to, you know, work with the, the farmers within Ontario and making sure that they do have the sophistication, as I mentioned, Cohen Farms is a good example that they are they are at the level of sophistication and they are helping the smaller farmers. And uh, certainly looking at better efficiencies um, via distribution. Uh, again, some more uh, impacts. Increased income for the small rural farmer. So this is another option for their crops. Certainly as an entrepreneur uh, and an independent business owner, farmers have a variety of routes of, of income, but this could be another uh, for their crops because long-term care facilities and hospitals have three-week menu cycles. There's not peaks and valleys, so um, there would be consistent buying. It's just probably at a different price point. 
And then the secondary impact on local businesses, so supporting the community where the product is grown. So that may be through advertising, it may be through a packaging company. Uh, there's a variety of businesses that can benefit from that. So what is the approach for long-term sustainability? And so we're looking at local engagement and policies. So I keep mentioning the group purchasing organizations and the distributors, but because the healthcare facilities do rely so much on both, um, it, is, it is imperative that they become involved and they provide the information that is necessary to have the sustainability. Um, policies and procedure document for implementation for the healthcare sector. So certainly having a how-to. Uh, we've had a lot of lessons learned through this project, and um, there are many other projects under the broader public health, or broader public sector investment fund. Uh, so there will be a document prepared for these uh, partners, but certainly that can be shared, and so we won't have to reinvent the wheel uh, again and again. Uh, two key lessons learned is basically is, is with making sure that food safety practices are in place from the from the gates to the plate, as well as um, supplier or grower specifications. So not just the cheapest product, but certainly looking at all the attributes, including whether or not it's local. So what will work best for, with your facility? As I mentioned, we've gone through a few examples here. Um, there's a variety of, of things that you can do to get more local into your facility. Um, one is your healthcare facility is working directly with one grower or a couple growers. And when my experience from this project, talking to the growers, uh, you know, you can't go to a grower in May and say, okay, this is what we need. You need to order it the year before so they get their planting done. What I'm suggesting is perhaps a few facilities can get together if you're in a rural area and you can go to a grower or a couple growers and say, you know, this is our menu cycle. This is what we're going to need over the next little bit. It's not, um, the, and the deliveries um, are certainly a concern. So making sure that you're able to get the deliveries the consistent and on time. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this, this sector really does rely on their main distributor as well as their GPO. So this is thinking outside a little bit of the box and, uh, and if the deliveries are consistent and are on time, I really believe it could be a viable option um, in addition to your main distributor. And then healthcare facilities completing online ordering with OntarioFresh.ca. This is another initiative, that's the website Ontario.ca um, where suppliers and growers will have their products online. I'm not sure this is an option. They've just started um, a, started this um, online form it's probably within the past three months. I really think it's a great opportunity for restaurants. Um, I'm encouraging the partners within the project to test it out, but I just wanted to mention it during the presentation so you can check it out and if it is an option uh, for, your, for your facility, that's terrific. Um, I really, again, based on the evidence and the examples within this project, rec be, or be realistic and recognize um, our geography and growing seasons within Ontario. Um, so, you know, certainly um, we have a variety of products, but we do not have, you know, a 10-month growing season. And w certainly with greenhouses, we, we have a different, uh, we do have different products that we can get. But um, I think we need to be realistic about that. And then also you must have a dedicated cha uh, champion to lead and to implement. Interest is not enough. There needs to be engagement. So uh, in the, uh, the uh, journal article by Wilson, there was information about green greenwashing. So the whole environment sustainability and the greenwashing, it's great to talk about it, but to actually implement it is always the trick. So, um, you know, you need that dedicated champion and you need support within your facility from the top down. So just to summarize before I get into the questions, um, I just wanted to make sure that um, you understood the scope of the project. It's in four phases and it will be ending in March. I'm just wrapping up the policy and 
document side of things. As I mentioned, we had our recipe challenge last week, which was really a lot of fun and really engaging and boost the morale for each, each facility. That was, that was a lot of, uh, again, a lot of fun. Um, the changing needs and the engagement. So as I mentioned earlier, we definitely need to identify um, patient satisfaction, food waste, um, implementing local food, how does that change that? And then the overall engagement um, with the entire value chain. So it's not just the facilities, but the distributor and the GPOs. And then the opportunities and challenges. The opportunities are very real and the challenges are very real. Um, I believe a project like this would be best done over two to three years. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, have, we had seven months to implement it. I think we've made really great success um, steps, uh, but certainly for long-term sustainability, it'd be great to have uh, another two years to, um, to fine-tune it. And then again, the overall impact on the local food system, so increased income for smaller farmers, um, increased uh, income for the entire community, um, more sophistication at the local farmer level, um, again, is, is a nice outcome or impact on the food system. And then the next step for sustainability. So it's a, um, as I said earlier, we're all kind of at the ground level working on this recognizing, again, our growing seasons and what we do best within Ontario, and then uh, building upon that is what I, I would recommend. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, I believe I have about 10 minutes to answer questions. Okay, so I see that. So as a 10-bed facility concerned with end-of-life uh, are even smaller than most, is that how might we proceed with a field-to-table system? We strongly support local. Um, I think with a small facility, depending on where you are um, and depending on your distributor, I think that um, if you could work with a local grower, and uh, because you're such a small facility, if you could go to your grower um, in say November to January and say, look, this is what we need over the next season and this is what we would, um, you know, serving um, from this time to this time, can you grow it for us? And um, ideally have them deliver it to you. Um, I would suggest doing, doing that. And when you are um, identifying whether or not this grower would be suitable, making sure that they have um, you know, some food safety systems in place, uh, see how they deal with the product once it's pulled out of the ground, um, do they have proper food service packaging, um, all of those questions you'd need to consider. Once I've done the document for this project, uh, a stepwise uh, checklist will be in place for that. So, I mean, if you want to circle back at that time, which would be towards the end of March, I'm sure I can share that information with you then. Okay, the next question, does the Ministry of Health provide any feedback for this project? Um, this project is funded by the Greenbelt, um, and I, I don't know if they're going to provide any feedback, um, the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. It's a good question, though, and certainly um, with the many different uh, sectors within the Ontario government, it would be it would be great if there was uh, cross-pollination. Uh, the next question, how will the policy procedure document be published and shared? Um, it will be shared uh, through um, Norfolk County, so once, uh, again, once it's completed, you can contact me until the end of March or contact Norfolk County after that. Um, I, the Green Belt will have a copy as well, um, and I'm not sure if they're going to have a, a, a universal site, but it will definitely be, um, you'll be able to source it through Norfolk County. Uh, the next question, more of a comment than a question. Okay, uh, more of a comment, I am from the Ontario Fruit and Vegetables Road, and we run a fruit and vegetable program in Northern Ontario for the Ministry of Health. We send out um, 36,000 surveys every week to 
200 schools and central, oh, central purchase need and distribution is the way to go. So, I mean, yeah, 36,000 servings um, through central distribution and, or central purchasing and distribution is the way to go. Um, I, I agree with that, certainly. It's, it's making sure that, um, you know, if, I'm not sure if this project you had, you were able to deal with a distributor from scratch. Um, often long-term care facilities and, and hospitals are uh, through relationship building and just through history are in with, or their GPO are in with a preferred distributor. That's a challenge if that distributor is not um, on board with the local food initiative. So I agree that um, you, if central purchasing and distribution is the way to go and it, as long as the engagement is there. Uh, Charles Zilber here, and, and uh, I'm, I'm viewing, viewing a movie called The Future of Food, and, and there's a little, as the next is a little food cooperative uh, short film on, on how, you know, they, they buy a share in the bar and get the food delivered to people. The Future of Food, it says DVD. Okay, thank you very much. Look on it on YouTube and find it. Okay. And I've got one last question here. Um, at Queensway Hospital in Otto, we, we also have a PBS. Um, we also have a PPS grant and have been working on a similar initiative um, to you. We have created three new all Ontario products within healthcare food services. We now have to market and distribute these. Uh, what approaches do you find successful for marketing products specifically? So I'm not sure if um, you as a I'm I'm not sure if you as a hospital are have created these products and you're you're now marketing them. Um, what I found is through this broader public sector investment fund, um, talking to the other recipients, um, as soon as there was a local food found, for instance, there was a lasagna found, uh, beef lasagna that was created um, to have the majority of ingredients local, um, and, and we're using the Foodland Ontario definition for, definition for local, um, we, it was just really word of mouth, but it's a really good example of, uh, you know, how do we promote the Ontario products. I think um, depending on how it's distributed, as I mentioned earlier, um, some of the distributors are in have systems in place to actually uh, identify and specify and categorize all the Ontario products. Unfortunately, um, with the, some of the other ones, um, they can't even track it. So we're all at a at a startup level. Um, I think um, you know certainly um, getting in with the distributor and, and advertising it that way. Again, I want to thank you for participating today, and um, if you have any further questions, my information is up on the screen. It's at um, Jane Dummer, jane.dummer at norfolkcounty.ca, and please feel free to email me any questions um, within the next two, two, less than two months, uh, seven weeks, and I'd be happy to, to answer them. <coughs> Leslie, do you have any remarks you'd like to make before we... I, I'd just like to thank Jane very much for a really interesting presentation. Really, uh, really learned a lot, and I, I think the, um, the successes that, uh, that the project has had are big for great learning experience, as well as uh, you know, being realistic about some of the challenges that need to be addressed. Um, thank you to everyone who participated today and posed questions, and a reminder again to please... Uh, provide us your feedback when you get that evaluation link in the mail.